So yeah, this is the second episode of three that's gonna be sponsored by Autodoc. Um, the first one was the service, oil service we did a few weeks back on the L322. This one's the brakes, and then we've got one more to come in the next few weeks. Um, Autodoc, if you guys didn't know, is an online part supplier. They supply both the UK uh, and, the, and Ireland and uh, all of Europe, basically. Um, the great thing about it, if you're in Ireland, is that they supply it from the EU. So uh, post-Brexit, obviously, if you order any parts, into Ireland from the UK, you get hit with pretty bad customs charges. But being that Autodoc have a base in Germany, you can order parts to Ireland and get them pretty quickly without any uh, customs charges, which is great. They also have a base in the UK, so you can order parts straight to your door there as well. Um, and they basically have parts to suit every vehicle from basically every OEM supplier that you can imagine. So when I looked at the brakes for the L322, there are about 10 different manufacturers of discs and pads, um, ranging from all different kinds of prices. But obviously for the L322, I wanted to fit the very best. So I've gone for full Brembo discs and pads all round, um, actually at a very reasonable price. Um, this car has the big six pot Brembo calipers on it. So the discs themselves are absolutely huge, as you guys will see in a minute. Um, but yeah, really good price on all this stuff. I've got the discs, I've got the pads here as well. And we've got all of the, uh, the hardware, new pins, springs, all that kind of stuff as well. And as well as that, because I don't know when the last time that the brake fluid was changed on the Range Rover was, actually I could probably find out from looking at the service history, but it's at least two or three years ago at this point. Um, I'm gonna be doing a full brake fluid replacement as well. And to do that, I've got myself a brake pressure bleeder kit here as well. So we're gonna be showing you how to use that. And then finally, the last thing we're gonna be doing is painting the front calipers, possibly the rear calipers as well, brake caliper red. So obviously the Brembo brakes have got to be red. And I've never really had this before because I've never really had a car that's warranted, uh, you know, painting the brake calipers. They've always had big steel wheels on or, or, you know, just have normal size brakes. But with those huge Brembo calipers at the front of the Range Rover, I think we should do them justice and show them off with this nice red paint. So um, hopefully, by the end of this video, we'll have a fully refreshed brake system that looks really good as well. So I guess we better make a start. So there you go, Range Rover's up in the air on four axle stands now. Nice big strong three or four ton ones. Um, all four wheels are taken off, revealing our lovely big brakes all round, which we're going to be going through very shortly. L322 Range Rover is probably my least favourite vehicle to actually try and jack up. It's really not very fun. It's really heavy, obviously, 2.8 tonnes. Really tall as well, so you have to get it really high up in the air to get the wheels off the ground. Really long, long travel suspension, so all in all, a bit of a pain. But now that it's up on the stands, it's pretty sturdy. Got wheels, the wheels that I've taken off, I've got all round underneath it as well, just as an extra layer of security. So the first thing we're going to do is take out the old pads. Um, and to do that, we're going to take out these two pins and this kind of cross bolt here that kind of ties the caliper together. Um, so these pins have obviously been in a long time since whenever these brakes were last changed. Um, I'm guessing it's at least 50,000 miles ago. So I want to give these pins a good soaking with GT85. Now, I should really have done this a bit earlier to give them a chance to soak. Um, and then we're basically going to attack it with hammers, punches, um, and maybe try and get some grips in here to give this a twist to see if we can get these to come out. But it's basically going to be pretty hard work. Oh, yeah, that's fun. That should get that now. There we go. That's the spring. So there's pin number one removed. Um, obviously, we're definitely gonna need to fit new ones. 
um, as when you're removing these, you basically mangle the end of the, uh, the pin pretty badly. Um, so yeah, luckily we've got a new set of these to fit. Now the top pin was extremely well seized into the caliper. Steel pin, aluminium housing. I'm guessing bimetallic corrosion had played its part in sticking the pin in there as it would not come out. All the hammering with a punch had basically mushroomed the end of the pin to the point where it wouldn't pass out of the caliper anymore, so we had to resort to drilling off the end of the pin. However, once we'd done that, some good wallops with the club hammer and a solid punch got it moving. Hey, a bugger. Oh well, not much left at the end. And the hole survived, apart from the very outside edge. So we'll just have to dress up this outside edge before we paint. But that should go again. Cross pin removed. It seemed a caliper so easy to squeeze back. Mm. Nice. Yeah, cool. Did it be funny if, like, we pretended I wasn't here and just occasionally a third <laughs> hand would come in? <laughs> <laughs> Helping hand of the Range Rover gods. <laughs> It's so light. Can't wear anything. Mm. But they'd be expensive to replace. So yeah, it's one big giant Brembo caliper off. It doesn't actually weigh that much considering how huge it is. But uh, yeah, that's good. So we decided to take the caliper off. Um, you can paint these basically in situ, but I think if we take it off, we can get a better. Job of degreasing it, so it's just a 14mm socket on this banjo bolt that connects it. I've just put some vice grips on the on the, uh, uh, the flexi hose there. It's a little bit naughty, you should have a proper tool for that really, but it'll do the job. A little 6mm hex in here. Oi, you big bugger! There we go, there's our front Brembo calipers off the Range Rover and just look how big they are. They're ridiculously huge. I always knew these were massive brakes when you sort of look through the wheel and you can see them, but it's not until you hold one of these things in your hand you realise how massive they are. And also actually surprisingly light because they're actually an aluminium caliper. Um, but yeah, serious, serious piece of kit. I hate to think when the Range Rover was new how much of the bill of materials cost, basically the cost to build the car, was sunk into these brakes. Must have been a huge chunk. So yeah, in the end, we did end up taking them off the car. I think we're gonna be able to do a much better job of painting and cleaning them up um, than having them on the vehicle. Um, so we can get a really good degrease session going on, get all this crap off of here, which has been on for many, many months and probably years. And then get them ready for a lovely coat of fresh red paint. So yeah, next, start degreasing, cleaning them up, and um, yeah, then we'll crack on with some paint. <laughs>
of work. This is what we've ended up with. So what I did basically was degrease it initially. I uh, went through a lot of brake cleaner. Um, went through basically all three tins that I bought for the job um, using a, basically a, a stiff brush and uh, got rid of all the really heavy grease on the outside. And then once that was done, I got my little, I said little, I got my wire wheel of death on the grinder, used this in, yeah, and used this very carefully just to take off any of the lumps of iron that's kind of stuck to the aluminium um, or stuck in the paint and any big lumps and smoothed it all off. But you definitely have to be careful with this because it's kind of a soft aluminium casting and you can easily take away too much material or cause damage if you use this with too much gusto. Um, so yeah, just kind of gently took off all the lumps with that. And then I've just been over it again using clean rags and some more brake cleaner just to um, take any residue off and get it nice and uh, clean for paint basically. The primer I'm going to be using is this etch primer from Halfords. Um, this is basically kind of an acid um, coating that's going to eat its way into the remaining paint and into the aluminium as well actually um, to bite into it and basically give us a really good key. Um, Okay, so edge primer gives us a good shake. The can's been sitting next to the log burner for a while, so it's nice and warm. And what we're going to do is use two or three light coats over the whole thing. Right, so while this stuff is all drying, um, we're going to move on and do the rear brakes on the rangey. So 13 mil on the bolt, and 17 to counter hold it. tight. I do like these new style Halfords ratchets. Really nice and long, lovely fine tooth ratchet on them. It's really nice, solid. They got their game a lot, that's for sure. So there you go, there's our rear bracket off. Now I didn't film it, but one crucial step you've got to do before taking the rear disc off is to wind back the handbrake shoes on the inside of the disc. There's a small star wheel that can be accessed from through the front of the disc uh, that allows you to do that, and oh. then the disc pops off nicely just like that. So there you go, there's our lovely shiny Brembo disc fitted. What I'm gonna do now is take the caliper bracket over to the bench. We're gonna strip out these, uh, these old mounting uh, clips, put new ones in, clean it all up, and uh, take a look at these pins and see if they need any grease, but I think we should be good to go. 
Some of you guys might ask why I'm not painting these red to match the fronts. Um, basically because they're not really worth painting, to be honest. They're so, sm they're so small compared to the front ones, they don't look anything special. And you're really not going to be able to notice them through the, uh, the wheels of the car anyway. Um, so we'll just give them a decent clean up. Nice new disc on there, it'll still look pretty good through the wheel, I think. Um, and those front Brembos will be the, uh, the main conversation piece. And as we've got all the pins and seals here to, re to redo these uh, slide pins, we may as well, even though they feel pretty good as they are, you know, we may as well throw some new parts in there. So I'll peel these seals off. There go, yeah, looking pretty good still. Grease is obviously a bit dark, but uh, yeah, not bad. So we get some of this proper TRW grease that we've got here, and uh, that is actually the original manufacturer of the rear brakes on the Range Rover, TRW. Pop our new seal on, which goes uh, that way around. Like that. Pop them in there. and squeeze the seal over the end. <coughs> Lovely. So there's 60, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then it says plus another 90 degrees. Gotta go 90 degrees from there. You know what, I'm actually gonna use the breaker for this. So there you go, that's one side done. New disc, new pads, uh, all greased up, new pins, new seals, very nice. Um, I did manage to damage the uh, pad sensor here. I just uh, managed to crack the end of it when I was taking it out. It's really easily done. Uh, they're quite brittle after they've been used for a few thousand miles. Um, so after all, do another one of those. It's just a loom that goes up to a little box um, behind the liner. And I'll replace that when I've got time to do it. But for now, I'll just tie it up out of the way. Uh, it's not going to cause any issues, but it just won't warn us when the, uh, the pads are going to be worn out. So we haven't got to worry about that for a while anyway. So anyway, right, all I've got to do now is do the same on the other side. Here you can see me adjusting the handbrake shoes on the inside of the new disc, uh, just to the point where they just slightly drag on the uh, on the inside of the disc there. Once I get it to the point where the disc is locked up, I'm backing it off a tiny amount just so we've got that ever so slight drag. Job done.
Right, now the calipers have been drying here all day, they're pretty much ready for lacquer, but before we do that, we've got one more very important thing to do, and that is fit these, or at least these ones. I think we're going to go with the bigger ones. Uh, yes, yeah, so these are Brembo uh, calipers, obviously. We're going to stick some Brembo decals on the fronts here, making sure we get them the right way around, and then we're going to lacquer over the top when we lacquer the entire things, uh, which will completely seal these in and protect them. Hopefully they'll last a pretty long time. Uh, yeah, so we've got to figure out which calipers which side again now and then uh, find out the orientation of this. So this is the right caliber, caliper, and it's gonna be sitting kind of like this in the car, on the right hand side. So we wanna make sure we get this facing the right way. We obviously want the text to read that way as opposed to that way. I'm pretty happy with that. Nice. That looks cool. <laughs> so with a bit of lacquer over the top of that, that will be pretty much permanent. All right, let's just do the other one just as nicely as that and we'll be good to go. Try and get this equal to the other side with the E pretty much in line with the center hole. Lovely. Right, these are both looking absolutely amazing now. So to kind of lock all this in, what you've got to do is chuck some lacquer over the top. And this is kind of the most important stage to getting it to look really good, is getting the lacquer to look great as well. So I'm actually going to warm my can up a little bit in addition to shaking it, just to make sure we get a lovely even coating on these guys. Remember this going on? Oh, wow, they look amazing. And I have to cut in here guys, because it was at this point in the video that things started to go a little bit wrong. Now you're probably wondering, how did a simple brake rebuild go so terribly wrong? Well, let me show you. So on each of these big Brembo 6 port calipers, we've got two bleed nipples here on top. One for each side of the pistons. We've got three pistons on each side. Hence the 6 pot brake caliper. Now when I was stripping the system down, I mistakenly thought that I'd loosened all four of these brake nipples. So two on each caliper. And the reason I wanted to do that is obviously because I was disconnecting the calipers from the brake system, I wanted to make sure I'd be able to bleed them back up again afterwards. So I thought I'd done all four of these, but in fact, I'd actually only done three. And like anything with cars, always the last one that gives you the trouble. So unfortunately, this side came out okay, but this side didn't. So as you guys can probably see there, that is the remnants of the hole, and there's probably still a little bit of uh, bleed nipple stuck in there because this bleed nipple was absolutely seized in place. And no matter what I tried using heat, letting it penetrate for over 12 hours it still wouldn't come undone and fortunately it snapped off and then the threads in the hole were obviously damaged when we tried to remove the remainder of that bleed nipple so 
it basically left this caliper unusable for the time being. So these calipers obviously aren't on the vehicle, but the Range Rover is here, and obviously I drove it back from Kent in the workshop where you saw me working on it, so you're probably wondering how that happened considering the brake calipers for the Range Rover are sat here on the tailgate. Well, one good thing about working at home in Kent on the Range Rover is that Land Rover and Range Rover parts availability is way better in the UK than it is here in Ireland. So thankfully I was able to find a good used pair of these calipers exactly the same, uh, not too far from my parents' house down in Kent. The calipers I bought were actually off of an L494 Range Rover Sport, they're from like a 2018 or 2019 car, so quite a lot newer than these ones. Um, and I was lucky to be able to only pay 500 quid for the pair for those. So if you remember what my brother said a bit earlier on in the video. Mm. But they'd be expensive to replace. Yeah, he was right. So that leaves me with these calipers, one which will be perfectly usable, this one which will need a bit of machining work in order to be usable again. I think what we'll have to do basically is uh, open this hole out a bit bigger and put a hydraulic fitting in there with a new bleed nipple to basically make this caliper usable again. That'll be a job for the future, but for now, the Range Rover's back on the road. It's got those lovely, brand new, basically, calipers on the front, all the new discs all around, and the braking system's actually working better than it ever has before. See, I've done around 1,000 Ks now since I put the brakes in originally, probably more like 2,000 now actually, including the drive home from the UK. And uh, they're feeling, as I'm braking pretty hard now to avoid a crash from the van, pretty uh, inspiring. They're feeling very, very confidence inspiring. The amount of pressure that I actually need to put onto the pedal was drastically reduced from before, and the whole braking experience just feels a lot more progressive and a lot more um, bitey. You've got a lot more bite on the brakes, basically. Even before the brakes felt pretty good, but um, yeah, they were definitely lacking that initial bite, which we've definitely got back now with these Brembo discs and pads. Well worth doing. And that's going to about wrap it up for this chapter, guys. If you enjoyed the video, please remember to help the channel out and leave a like and a comment down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. And if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button because we've got loads of L322 content coming as well. And there's plenty more to do on my P38 project and the Cummins 130 coming up very soon. Anyway, ta-ta for now and I'll see you soon.